It all makes sense now. What good is helping the world if I can't help my favorite person in the world? It's a good thing I built in a dum-dum switch. I'm sorry, Dipper. In my last eight seconds of consciousness, I want you to know that science is a horizon to search for, not a prize to hold in your hand. Also, I miss getting my tummy tickled. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Pining for the Falls, the only podcast where you can get three tails in one. Three tails, price of one, um, and they're, they're all good. They're all good. They're all good tales. And maybe you buy something at the end. I don't know. Uh, we'll to tell. Say, I'm Fire Princess Lily, and I am joined, as always, by my good friend, Doc Sea Monster. Hey, Doc, how you doing? Uh, fortunately, okay. I was inches from a car accident. Well, that is bad. Not, not good. Uh, what happened? So I was heading home from giving a friend a uh, ride from work, and um, I was at an intersection, and the light turned red on the cross street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it turned green on my street. Mm -hmm, I started mm -hmm. moving forward, and right in front of me, a truck just blitzed through the intersection. Wow. If I hadn't been paying attention, I would have run right into him. Or if I if I had been going a little faster, pulling up out from the stoplight, he would have rammed right into me. Like if if I had not been aware of my shit, uh, that would have been a thing. That would have been a thing. Wow. Well, I'm glad you didn't get hit. Good looking Me too. Awesome. Yeah, like I'm not a perfect driver, but like I don't run red lights, uh, at, like like that. No, not like that. No, like I'll speed up through a yellow light sometimes, as we all do, and we we all shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But like, not like that. No, that's that is a bridge too. That is that is way over the line. That is literally just running a red light, literally running fast as you fucking can straight through. Straight through a stoplight. Yeah. So, uh, what else has been going on other than almost dying? Uh, I watched a couple episodes of the new Animaniacs. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Um, I've been busy with work, uh, so I haven't watched a ton of it. But I am going to go back and watch some more probably tonight, maybe tomorrow. Hmm. I don't know. I don't have work until Thursday, so I'm free for now. Yeah. I actually finished that. Cool. Uh, I'm glad. Is it, good? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it consistently good the whole way through? Uh, yeah, I think so. I feel so, but you know. Maybe I'm wrong. Always a possibility. Yeah, I mean, it seems fun. Yeah. I'll do that later. Um, anything else going on? Not really. It's been a, it has just been a run of days. I've been there. I've been there. I've done that. Uh, well, cool. Um, as for me, um, I just discovered, and I apologize to anybody listening, uh, that I have not uploaded an episode of this podcast since Boys Crazy. I was gonna mention it, so, but I got to. it's it's okay. I, I've mentioned before that my brain sometimes does a thing where I think about doing something and then it feels like I've done it, and I forget about it. So, 
I, the human condition. Huh? That's part of the human condition. Yeah. So, uh, I am working on that now. I mean, I will not be doing that while, while, while we're recording because I will get confused. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, everybody, um, but it's okay. They are going up. It's just, you know, YouTube takes a while to process things. So, I don't know that I'm getting them all up today, but they will all be up. Uh, did you see that we got our first question? Yeah, I did. It would have been cool if we... Uh, we'll, we'll answer that question after the episode. Um, it would have been cool if we got more questions. And it would have been okay. cool if I didn't feel like I had to bully somebody into it. But, you know. we got to get a first one before we get a second one. Yeah. Uh, I actually posted a... Uh, a link to that question post in one of the discords that I'm in and somebody answered it in the discord. And I was like, Hey, could you like ask that on Twitter? So I remember to uh, discuss it on the podcast. And they're like, do I have to? I was like, I, I mean, yeah, if you want it answered, otherwise this does not count. So. Uh. Yeah. 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 So yeah, 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 yeah. other than bullying people <laughs> and, uh, we're getting to upload a podcast. What have I been up to? Well, I did watch all of Animaniacs. And it's pretty good. Um, I don't really want to spoil anything. Sometimes they're a little heavy-handed with the political commentary, but that has been the Animaniacs since the 90s. So, you know, I can't really say anything. Um, That's like, not new. Yeah, it's not new. It's like I it's like I tell people when they complain that cartoons today are um, too political or whatever. It's not that they're more political than when we were children. It's just we're adults now and we can spot it easier. So, yeah, go back and watch some of those old Animaniacs. You're going to see a bunch of uh, political commentary. And you'll be like, wow, how did I miss that? Well, you were a kid. You weren't aware of, like, Clinton's terrible politics um oh like i i i came across a um political joke compilation that was only from pinky and the brain segments on youtube <laughs> it was in two parts yeah it yeah. was in like two 20 minute parts basically they make a lot you know yeah Um, let's see. I also watched all of what is uh, currently out of this season's hottest new uh, shonen anime, Jujutsu Kaisen. Oof, that is a mouthful. Um, pretty good. It's okay. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's shonen. I thought they were going to do a thing where they killed off, like, who you thought the main character was. Sort of like a Gurren Lagan. And, like, go with this other character. Which would have been cool and interesting to me for, like, a shonen. Uh, they did not do that. Nope. Like. Instead, um, the boy has special powers that won't allow him to die just yet. So. Ah. Uh, yes. You know, special boys got to be special boys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's not bad. The uh, animation is done by Studio Mappa, and they are real, real good at what they do. They did uh, Got a High School this year, which had really great animation and a really rushed story. And I'm still sad about that. But, you know, it is what it is. Still watching DuckTales. <laughs> There'll be a new episode tonight. Um, this one will... Tonight's episode is supposed to be about how Santa uh, stole Christmas. <coughs> okay. Well, if you don't know, um, Scrooge McDuck does not like Santa for <coughs> an unknown <coughs> reason. So we get to find out what that reason is tonight. It'll be fun. And of course, I've been watching wrestling. Wrestling's real good. This week, Kenny Omega and uh, John Moxley are wrestling for the title. 
And I think Kenny Omega is going to win that title from him. We'll see. I don't know. I could ju it just feels like it's time for a new champion. And who better than the best bout machine himself, Kenny Omega. Honestly. Um, the only other person I could see that I would want to have the title right now, other than Moxley, would be either Orange Cassidy. But he's not... On a national level for, like, TV, he's not at, like, a level where people would be okay with that. So, yeah. I don't know. Or see John Silver take the championship. But he no, he doesn't have enough wins in the singles division to really warrant, like, a big title shot like that. So, it's just, it's going to be what it is. It's going to be what it is right now. And, um... It's gonna be Kenny Omega. It's gonna be good. Return of the cleaner. Enjoyable. Certainly. And well, that is that is it, folks. That's all I really had to talk about, other than Gravity Falls this week. Just kind of like a quick shot of stuff. Um. Because well, nothing like really. Nothing really big's happening. You know what I mean? I mean, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, which is getting worse. And I like to not... I try not to think about it too much. Because, you know, existential dread. Terror sets in. Um, Trump is still not conceding. Although, Biden is finally being given some transfer abilities. So, that's probably about as close as we're ever going to get to Trump saying, I lost. Um, and here's the thing, folks. I don't know who's listening to this podcast. Not a lot of people. Not a lot of people. And at random. So, uh, I don't even know if anybody will hear me say this. If you are a Trump supporter, I don't know why you're listening to this podcast, one. But if you are, um, and you totally believe in that this election was stolen, I gotta say you're an idiot. Like, that's about as nice as I could put it, because um, he knows he lost. All, all this about fraud and stuff, not real, not true. And he knows it, and his lawyers know it. You know how you know that's the fact in the case? Because while they're screaming about fraud on TV where you can see it, where you're like actively viewing it, uh, while they're in court, they are not alleging fraud at all. They are specifically not alleging fraud like judges are asking are you alleging fraud and they're saying no and why is that because they can't actually lie in court i mean they could but if they get caught and like if they get caught lying about something like this grand it's like more than contempt it's not it's not good so they can't actually lie to the judge like there was a uh Early on in these many lawsuits, um, there was a attorney that was like hinting at fraud until the judge said, as a member of this court, are you alleging fraud? Which is super serious. That is him saying, yeah. look, I am a sitting bar judge. And if you are alleging fraud, you need to allege it because if you if you get caught lying, you're going to get disbarred. Just is what's going to happen. And the guy was like, no, I'm not alleging fraud. So they, they can't do it. Also, the Pennsylvania thing, that is done. That got thrown out with prejudice. <laughs> um, for those of you who didn't follow the uh, Velcro mayonnaise lawsuit last year, uh, with prejudice is like, that's it. You're done. You can't bring it back up. Uh, you can appeal it. You can appeal it being thrown out. But you cannot bring your case up to a different judge. Is what with prejudice means. Yeah. So, and the way appeals work, you cannot bring in new evidence to an appeal unless it's like earth shattering. If it's earth shattering evidence, absolutely. But generally in an appeal, you have to argue that your case shouldn't have been thrown out based on the evidence that you had in that moment. So, Pennsylvania's done. 
it got thrown out with prejudice by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. And I know that some of you are thinking, well, what about the uh, National Supreme Court? Well, the way our law systems are set up, um, the National Supreme Court can actually not oversee a decision made by a state Supreme Court regarding an action in that state. Which is actually, you know, not a terrible way to set something up. Because it keeps uh, bigger courts from bullying smaller courts. So. You, so what I'm basically what I'm getting at is um, he's just trying to get as much money out of you as he possibly can before he has to leave because he's in debt. And this is oh, just yeah. the latest grift. And you're falling for it. Um, every time I look at one of these emails that somebody gets sent from this guy, I'm like, man, this reads just like a televangelist, like, uh, sermon. It reads almost just like it talking about sending seed money and shit. Like you are in a cult. I'm sorry. It's not easy. I don't have the tools to deprogram you, but hopefully, I don't know. Maybe you'll hear this and you'll be like, damn, I'm in a cult and you'll do something about that for yourself. You know, being cold, not good. Um, hey, you want to talk about Gravity Falls? Because we got three great stories to talk about with Gravity Falls today. Uh, I would love to. All right, let's uh, shift gears, talk about children's cartoons. Uh, we watched Little Gift Shop of Horrors, Season 2, Episode 6, Little Gift Shop of Horrors. This is their clip episode for the season. Uh, we had one last last season that was okay. I feel like, if I can say, this is a the better clip show. Uh, or short story. I agree. I didn't dislike. I didn't dislike the first season one. Oh like no, the bottom, bottom of that one. But these three stories are actually they can also honestly all of these three could probably probably stand on their own. Yeah, they these could be full episodes if they really wanted them to be. Maybe not the hand one. Maybe not the hand one, but the other two, for sure. Certainly. Certainly. All right, so we open on a dark and spooky night at the Mystery Shack. There's thunder and lightning, and uh, looking at the sign says no refunds. Basically, we're treated to a first-person perspective of somebody approaching the Mystery Shack, and that'll be true for the whole episode in scenes where uh, they're not telling one of the stories. And I think that's kind of neat. Yeah, that's a better framing device. Yeah. So Grunkle Sand opens up the mystery shack. He's like, ah, hello there, Traveler. I see your car is broken down on this lonesome country road and a place so remote. No one can hear you scream. And you, we start to back away. And he's like, whoa, whoa, wait. Pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> he's like, come in, come in. But be warned. If you, if you enter, you'll be subject to my tales. I have a tales designed to sell my merchandise. <laughs> and he's like, oh, sorry. Uh, just laughing about something I thought I heard earlier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, we cut through the intro. Yeah. And we're inside a dark mystery shack. He's like, you've come to the mystery shack after hours. A time when only our creepiest and most cursed objects are for sale. Like that thing there. And uh, we turn to a just a gasping blob of mouths and eyes and limbs. It it's, has a hand. It has It has a hand. It has two hands. One's really large and kind of stapled on. The other one's like a little baby hand. There's also a big arm at the bottom. Lots of faces. Lots of mouths. It's not good to look at. It's very bad. It is whole it is horrific. <laughs> it's horrific. It's like, you, just, you just know that it like, you just know that it's really wet and makes and smells terrible and it makes sounds. It doesn't it make sounds in the episode, but you just know it makes sounds. Yeah. So it absolutely makes the just, it probably just makes the worst fucking sound you ever heard. So Gurgle Sandbob's always like, what? 
Not a fan? Too many orifices? Okay. <laughs> no problem. I got it. Just does have too many. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> if it has like three less, it might be okay. Uh, I think it needs a lot more less than that. Um, anyway, he says, I got just what you're looking for. This disembodied hand. <laughs> it's got a price tag of $500. He's like, why is it so expensive? Well, that's quite a tale. Uh, it's called Hands Off. <laughs> no, seriously, Hands Off. That's not for sale. Uh, as he picks up the Eye of Sauron from the uh, patron. <laughs> yeah, it's like a palantir. <laughs> it's really good. He's like, he's like, all right. Anyway, hands off. And we get cut to a, uh, we smash cut to a title card called Hands Off. And we're going to be treated to a tale about the, uh, the Hand Witch. We go to the Gravity Falls swap meet. Uh, have you ever been to a swap meet? No, actually. Ah, oh, man. I used to thought they were called swamp meets because it always feels like people who may live in a swamp were, are, are at these things. But I love a good swap meet. Um, you can find all kinds of just like weird stuff. Uh, sometimes you find some uh, some good stuff, and sometimes you find some dangerous stuff. Uh, I grew up in a little town called Wimberley, Texas. Not dissimilar to Gravity Falls in that it's a small town, so kind of you know secluded from other towns. Uh, definitely no weird ongoings that I knew of. But you know who knows. But every the first Saturday of every month was uh, called Market Days, and it's a swap meet. It is a total swap meet. I bought my first pack of magic cards there. I also brought my first butterfly knife there. So, you know, it's just like, <laughs> swap meets are great. If you ever get a chance to go to a swap meet um, in a non-pandemic era, <laughs> go to one. You're bound to find something great. Like a butterfly yeah. knife when you're yeah. 14. You gotta remember, I, I I I'm I'm in Texas, but I'm a city boy. Yeah. Oh, they have they have a swap meets in like uh, larger cities. Um, we have flea markets. It's the same. It's the, it's the same thing. thing. Same thing. Yeah. Flea markets, swap it's, meets, same thing. There's a couple. Of, there's a couple of flea markets in the town. I've never been to one though. Yeah, you should definitely check one out. I mean, where better to go to get a fifty dollar tattoo? I mean. Side note: I never got a tattoo at the Corpus Christi flea market. I would never get a tattoo in Corpus Christi, period. That's just asking for infection. That is <laughs> just free hepatitis with purchase. <laughs> anyway, now that we've made fun of Corpus Christi, um, deserve very deserved. Uh, Mabel's just like, oh man, swap meets. These are the best. Look at all these priceless treasures, bobbleheads. They agree with everything I say. Uh, Dipper puts on some glasses. He's like, look, I look like a genius now. But they're glasses. He doesn't need them. So he uh, bumps into the rack of other glasses and knocks them over. Then Stan finds a stand uh, with watches. He's like, oh, look at these watches. They're mob boss quality. <laughs> Stan's just the best. Stan's the best. Uh, there is a witch behind the behind this uh, table, reading a magazine called Crone Alone Magazine. Witches be tripping. It's got like a witch in a baseball cap on it. Yeah, it does. And wearing a gold chain. I love it. It's the best. Um, be sorry. Tripping. The witches be tripping. She's like, in anyway, she's like, all right, kids, prepare to watch a delicate out of the deal. <laughs> hey, Hagface, how much are the uh, junk watches here? Uh, only for the witch to say, they're not for sale, not for you, Stan Pines. Uh, and the wind starts blowing, and he's like, she's like, the wind whispers your name, which uh, causes Tyler Cutie Biker's wind chimes to blow. His stand is called, his stand is called, Several chimes, which is really great. I love it. Yep. Um, he tries to quiet it down, like, shush, you guys. It's like, all right, I get it, creepy. Less talky, more watchy. Uh, he throws money down on the counter, picks up a watch, and she's like, get your hands off my watch. Uh, her eyes start glowing, and he's like, ah, fine, yeesh, you freak show. <laughs> and 
the Pines family walks away. Mike was like, somebody needs to work on their social skills. And Sam's like, yeah, and their observation skills. Ha <laughs> ha, look! Good job, Heiston Hands, because he's got one of the watches on his wrist. He kisses his hands, and Dipper's like, Uncle Sam, are you seriously going to shoplift from a witch? That sounded like a curse. He's like, that sounded like a curse. Hey, anybody want to buy a wet blanket? Wet blanket for sale. <laughs> Everybody's laughing at Dipper, except for, um, what's this guy's name again? Toby Determined. Toby Determined is actually selling wet blankets. Because <laughs> he sucks. Um, it is great. It is. It is a great. <gasps> what thing is a great thing to have in case of a fire? <gasps> yeah, I mean, but that blanket is going to try out eventually. <gasps> Not if it's good quality. <laughs> but Toby's like, I can't survive in this market. We cut back over to the mystery shack uh, in the morning, and Alara's beeping. As Stan approaches the mirror, and he screams, he's like, "Hey!" No, wait a minute. Is this uh, is this normal ugly or is this like a uh, curse ugly? Yeah, <laughs> it looks like I got off scot free. He raises his wrist, and uh, both his hands are gone, and he screams for real. Uh, so we cut over to him making breakfast for the kids, and he's trying to hold onto a pan, but he drops it because he can't hold the oven mitts without hands. And they're like, yeah. "Oh my God! No, no, no hands! What the hell?" Crickle Sam, what happened to your hands? And he's like, um, nothing. So I might have got a little cursed. But the watch looks nice, right? Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> he looks at the watch, and the witch's face is there. She's like, foolish man, thieving hands. Find the wicked face. We must return what is it yours. And he puts uh, one of the oven mitts back on. He's like, yeah, that'll shut that up. <laughs> Dipper's like, I told you, Uncle Stan, you got to give that watch back and apologize. He's like, what? That old crow should be apologizing to me for the dime I right to buy cheap junk. I don't need hands. I got self-respect. Uh, he tries to pick up a cup. He drops it. He hits a fork and throws bacon in his face. He says, Mabel, sweetie, will you make your grunkle some hands? And Mabel makes him uh, some god-awful plastic cups with forks for fingers. It's not good. It's, it's actually bad. It's, uh, I mean, she tried, but that you, you can't. It's no, no, Mabel. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. You tried, but. Um... No. no. So she's like, say hello to your new hands. He's like, ah, nice work, kid. Uh, he tries to, like rub her hair, like, you know, pat her head. The forks get caught in her, in her hair and, like, rip out some of it. And she's like, ah, I'm ready to take on the day. He uh, raises his hat to uh, Lazy Susan, who screams at, at his hands. We cut over to him trying to bowl. He just drops the ball, which causes a lot of damage in the bowling alley. It's pretty fun to look at. Uh, we cut over to him in the supermarket. And one of the uh, employees is like, hey, Mr. Pines, should we play Toss Me a Dozen Eggs like we always do? Which is a pretty great gag. He's like, no, not today, Jimmy. Not today. Uh, Jimmy tosses all the eggs and Stan gets des destroyed. <laughs> and he's like, okay, let's go find that witch. <laughs> so they come to a cave. They're like, Ma and Mabel's like, according to uh, the guy at the flea market, the hand witch lives in the horrible hand witch lair on hand witch mountain. Which, where, of course, where else is she going to live? Stan's uh, new hands are flashlights. <laughs> um, the trio are then uh, poked on the shoulder. Like, what, like each each one of them. Mabel's like, hey, did you tap me on the shoulder, Grunkle Stan? He's like, look at me. I can't tap anything. Um, Dipper gets tapped on the shoulders. And they're like, uh, guys, could you stop tapping my shoulders? And that's when they start looking around with the lights, and there are just a bunch of hands all over the walls. Just disembodied hands. It's not good. They're all green and rotten looking. Yeah, it's it's, it's gross. Uh, Dipper does his best to try to fight off some of the hands as they're now attacking. Stan gets slapped a bunch. Mabel loses at rock, paper, scissors. It's pretty good. That's when the witch shows up, 
And she's like, well, look at this touching scene. Up top. Because she gets gets a high five from one of the hands. She's like, you guys get the joke, right? He's like, Stan's like, all right, you horrible witch. She got me. Take it back. I'm sorry, etc. Can I just have my hands back? There's a certain gesture I'd like to share with you. The hand witch is like, mm, alas, your hands cannot be gotten so easily. The spirits say, um, the, the curse can only be broken with a, my kiss. And they're like, what? He's like, oh, all right, kids, just just look away. And Stan walks up, and he uh, kisses her hand. And she's like, on the lips, a kiss on the lips. He's like, what? Forget it. I'm not kissing any of that mess. You, I don't need my hands that bad. And Deborah's like, yeah, you're just making stuff up. And she says, like, all right, let's go, kids. It's like, no, wait, don't go. You're right, you're right. I was just making stuff up. I'm just trying to get something going, you know? I'm very lonely. It's hard to meet people these days. And <laughs> it's... This is so weird. And Dipper's like, wait, so this was all just a ploy to get a date? She's like, yeah, I'm desperate, okay? But every time I just bring somebody back in, they just keep... Without keeping their hands hostage, they just run away. And Stan says, oh, yeah, look at this horror show. Ugh. It's creepy, even for a cave. Mabel's like, yeah, you just need to redecorate. For example, she gathers up a bunch of hands and she makes a handelabra. And the hand witch is like, ooh, the hand witch likes. <laughs> and that's when Mabel, we get treated to a montage of redecorating the cave. Dipper, painting consultant. Mabel with paints. Uh, Stan, Stan we're, <laughs> he's got a hammer, yeah. And um, there's a little song about you You got to do it to make it work, you know. And then we cut over to uh, them bringing the hand witch back to the cave. And Mila's like, all right, time to take a look at your fantastic new cave. And the hand witch is like, <gasps> because it looks, you know, it looks good for a cave. And Mila's like, yeah, this is your brand new cave. Men will definitely want to hang out here. And I even let the book of pickup lines on the table and the hand witch is like oh my god i can't believe this is the same cave oh my goodness i just can't find the words he's like how about here's your hands back <laughs> it's like oh right here you go and uh she snaps her fingers stan's hands come out of her hair rub all over his face before jumping onto his wrist he's like shaky scratchy oh i missed you guys <laughs> he's like all right you're all right sister uh, he gives a thumb up, thumbs up, and then a bunch of hands give a thumb up. It's pretty good. She's like, will you be my boyfriend now? And he's like, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she waves them away as they leave. And she's like, oh, well, back to my crippling loneliness. Only for a hiker to, like, come up. He's like, oh, I'm lost in these mountains. Could I crash here for the night? She's like, uh, please, come in. Um, she pulls out the book of pickup lines and says, Girl, are those space pants? Because your butt looks out of this world. <laughs> it's like, wow, thanks for noticing. She's like, yes. <laughs> Which, <laughs> it's good. I like it. You support him both on this podcast. Yes. Uh, we cut back over to Stan inside the mystery shack. The disembodied hand is giving a thumbs up. He's like, uh, all right, I get it. You're not in the hands. You don't want a hand. I know you're a savvy customer. But perhaps you should be interested in buying, um, um... I should mention that he throws the hand away and it crawls away. Like, on its own power. But Stan's looking around for something to sell to us, and he picks up Waddles. He's like, uh, this is Magic Pig! Sure, he doesn't look magic, but there's a very interesting story that I'm about to make up about him. It's called A Baconings! <laughs> and, uh, we get a title card, A Baconings... It's a really weird title card considering that the short itself is about what it's about because Dipper is looking mighty afraid in this uh, title card. And, um, well, it's not it's not really a horror, a horror thing. No. Um, this is also when Neil deGrasse Tyson was getting, like, super popular on the internet. And that's why he's about to voice Waddles. Yes. <laughs> so we cut to a day in the mystery shack. Uh, 
Dipper is opening the Whatahecahedron. It's an intelligence test, sort of like a Rubik's Cube. And if you could solve it, you get your photo on the box. He's like, and Dipper's like, whoa, that's false advertising I can get behind. So he pulls out a sphere, and that's not what this thing should look like. It should look like a tangle of, like, shapes, more or less. That's what you're supposed to turn it into. Yeah. So Dipper's trying to solve it, and every time he's turning it, it pops up, lights come on, uh, and uh, tell him that he's wrong. Mabel chimes in with a uh, noise from a keyboard. He's, she's like, whoa, that's a bummer. This is May May and the Hog coming to you on the AM. She's doing her own like uh, morning broadcast radio show. I don't know if she's actually broadcasting to anybody or is this is just fun for her and Waddles. I think it's a, I think it's an unvoiced pun. I think so, but you never know. She says she's broadcasting to truckers. Yeah. So it's a uh, ham radio. It's ham, yeah. Dump bump. But uh, <laughs> not sure we can air that. Don't touch the dial, truckers, because the hog just ate it. Uh, but she makes some f- farting noises with her keyboard, and there's like I'm trying to solve solve this intelligence puzzle, but it seems impossible. And Mabel says very candidly, uh, "Maybe you're just not smart enough." Which sick burn, Mabel. Uh, Dipper's like, oh yeah, well we're gonna see about that. We cut to the mystery shack at night, and uh, Dipper's looking over the the book, the journal. He's like, buried near the falls, the legendary perception room will increase your uh, brain brain power. Just apply it, just grind it up, and apply it to your forehead overnight. And he points to the. Uh, what the heck a hedron and he's like tomorrow i own you he uh, slides some of the mushroom goop onto his forehead and goes to sleep waddles smells food <laughs> and immediately gets out of mabel's arms hops onto dipper's bed eats the smart mushroom and licks it all off his forehead um we're treated to a scene of waddles looking at books and then jumping up and down towards those books, indicating that he is now smarter. Um, Dipper wakes up. We cut to the morning. Dipper wakes up. He's like, aha, I feel smarter already. The digits of pi are 3.1. Uh, he doesn't even get to 4. He doesn't even get to 4. Um, a voice cuts in. An electronic voice that says, 4, 1, 5, 9, 2, 6, etc. <laughs> it's pretty good. This is Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, voicing Waddles. But uh, Dipper's like, hey, who said that? Mabel, was that you? And Ma- Dipper's like, no, Ma- Dipper, look. Waddles rolls in on a uh, contraption. It's like an RC car, a, a speak and spell, and a light bright, all attached to like this wooden device with a speaker. And Waddles is sitting on it, tapping away, he's like, greetings, friends. It is I, Waddles the pig. And they're like, what, what, what happened to you? Have you been possessed by the spirit of a nerd? Uh, Waddles informs him that he, I understand my transformation may be vexing, but I have prepared a presentation. Uh, he, he accidentally knocks over his presentation. Which was a laptop on some books with some coffee or a tea, I should say. He's like, forgive me, my pig arms are cute and useless. <laughs> uh, Dipper notices the empty bowl next to his bed. He's like, the brain goop, you ate it and built all this, didn't you? Uh, Mabel's like, this isn't right. The pig goes oink. The pig goes oink. Uh, Waddles responds with, Now the pig goes wherever he can shine the light of knowledge onto the darkness of ignorance. Uh, And next to him is a solved what the heck a hedron. And Dipper's like, whoa, how did you do that? And Waddle's like, I can teach you many things, Dipper. From the secrets of astrophysics to, hey, (laughs) because he's upset because now the goat is chewing on his uh, mobility device. He's like, hey. 
He's uh, winking at it really angrily. Um, Dipper's like, man, I am loving this new Waddles. And it was like, yeah, he's a uh, he's definitely uh, different. Waddle starts firing little missiles, uh, foam missiles at the coat and chasing it away. <laughs> it's really great. Um, Dipper's like, wow, dude, that rocket car is amazing. You and me, we should go invent stuff. And Mabel's like, hey, Waddles, don't you want to stay up here and uh, record some morning pranks with me? Dipper's like, Mabel, this pig's got a gift. He needs to share it with the world. And Waddles just said, like, I'm sorry, Mabel. There is more to life than making fart noises. I realize that now. <laughs> and they, uh, Dipper and Waddles runs away. Um, Mabel's like, yeah, you guys just uh, go on without me. She makes a fart noise with her keyboard. We cut over to the outside of the mystery shack. Grinda is flying a kite when she's gotten stuck in a tree. And Dipper and Waddles walk up and they're like, we can be a service. And Grinda's like, ah, an affront against nature. <laughs> uh, Waddles types out, ha, forget kites. Here, take this rocket pack I invented and explore the heavens yourself. Grinda says, forget that. Grinda's going to look at cute boys. <laughs> and, uh, she blasts away. She's like, I rule the skies. <laughs> she lights several fires. Uh, Dipper says, wow, dude, that rocket pack you made was amazing. D and uh, Waddles responds, don't forget the laser gun we made for Candy. Uh, we get flashes of pink light and uh, Candy shouts, that's to my enemies. Mabel's looking on and she's super sad. Uh, she's talking once again to the truckers. She's like, welcome to May May and the Hog AM. Top story today, coping with crippling loneliness after losing my co-host. She plays a loneliness sound. And then she feels sad looking at a, a picture of Wallace. She's like, what did that brain goop do to you? You're not happier like this, are you? There's a loud explosion. And uh, shakes the house. And Mabel goes to investigate. We cut over to Dipper and Waddles building something new. And Dipper's like, this is your greatest invention ever. You could solve pro all the problems of mankind with this. And, he's, and Waddles says, yes. And bring me many potatoes. Delicious potatoes. A robot arm feeds Waddle a potato. He says, yummy, yummy for my fat little pig tummy. <laughs> it's bad. Um... Mabel's like, what's going on here? It's like, ah, Mabel, you're just in time to hold our greatest achievement. It's a big, smart helmet. It, that's what it is. It's a big helmet made out of junk and it's supposed to make you smarter. It's the Smarticle Accelerator. Get it? Like, Particle Accelerator, but for smarts. Uh, Dipper's like, solving that brain puzzle is nothing. With this, Wiles will be able to solve all the greatest puzzles of the universe. Wiles like, the origin of life. The meaning of existence. Why dudes have nipples. Uh, this thing starts to turn on. And Dipper's like, soon your pig is going to be world famous. Meeting with scientists and presidents. I wonder if I could teach him to wear pants. Nabel's like, the whole world? But when will you have time for us? I'm your best friend. Waddle says, I'm still your friend, Mabel. I'm just helping people now. She's like, yeah, but what about helping me? Do you really want to spend your whole life in meetings with dumb, smart guys? This brain junk has made you forget who you are. Why Don't you remember us? Um, she pulls out the photo, which is just her and Waddles eating cake batter because it's Waddles' birthday probably in this photo, is what it says. Uh, we get a, a fun little song called Remembering Those Times, informing us to remember those times. And it's just Waddles remembering stuff about him and Mabel and how much fun and love they have for each other. It's it's cute. They're headbutting Stan. Um, it's good. Uh, we cut over to Waddles, back to Waddles saying, Ah, it all makes sense now. What good is helping the world if I can't help my most favorite person in the world? It's a good thing I built in this dum-dum switch. Uh, he throws the intelligent enhancement into reverse and the machine goes off. Uh turning him back to a dumb pig. <laughs> the intelligence levels go from high to low to pig. 
And Waddle says, sorry, I'm sorry, Dipper. In my last eight seconds of consciousness, I want you to know that science is a horizon to search for, not a prize that holds in your hand. Also, I miss my tummy getting tickled. Uh, Waddles then starts squealing, busts out of the rocket cart, and jumps into Mabel's arms. Unfortunately, the smart accelerator uh, breaks. So, the smarticle accelerator, I'm sorry, breaks. And Dipper's like, no, our invention! Maybe was like, you know what would make you feel better? A simple hug from a simple pig. He's like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, takes Waddles. Waddles looks at shake. He's like, ah, oh, this feels good. I like this. Uh, Waddles also barfs up the, uh, what the heck, a hedron. To which we get a good pig. And that's the end of that short. We cut back over to Sandy. He's like, you know what? You're right. Don't buy the pig. <laughs> In fact, I'm better off leaving it with my niece. Uh, Stan's hat gets hit with a dart, and he's like, Ha ha, no shooting in the house, sweetie. He's like, but perhaps I can interest you in something else. Like these spooky movies. These movies are great. You watch the movie, you scare the girl, the girl settles up next to you, next thing you know you're raising a kid, your life falls apart. Ah, oh, forget that last part. Uh, this next tale is called Clay Day. Uh, this one is probably the best of the three. Thoughts and opinions. Doc, you there? Yep. Yeah. Sorry. I just typed it for a second. I'm back. Oh. <laughs> um, we're on Clay Day. I feel like uh, this is the best of the three. What are your thoughts on that? Uh... Yeah, I, I think it, I think it I think they're all they're all really good. I think Clay Day maybe has the best stuff going on in it. Yeah, I do really like a Baconings. Oh, well, Baconings is good, but yeah. So uh, we cut to the Fiennes family watching TV. Zeus, Grunkle, Stan, and Dipper look bored out of their minds. Mabel is super excited for um, Shimmery Twinkle Heart. It's it's just a cute kid show, probably about friendship and this giant talking heart. I'm sorry, star. Giant talking star. And a girl named Cinnamon. And they're like, you did it. No, you did it. Because you believed in yourself. And uh, the other three are like, uh, everything about this is bad. I don't like this grown. It's like, apparently it was a 90 minute movie. <laughs> girl says like, well, that just put me 90 minutes closer to death. Uh, it's time to show kids a cool movie from back when I was a kid. And uh, Mabel's like, ooh, old people movies. Get ready for references we don't understand. Uh, references and, we don't understand, words we can't repeat. Yeah, and words we can't repeat. Um, Grunkle Sam puts it into the uh, tape player, and it's the voyages of Loin Clothicles. And we get treated to a man fighting a claymation monster. <laughs> you are no match for Loin Clothicles. And anyway, Mabel starts screaming because she is afraid of claymation monsters. There's like, no, Mabel. And he's like, well, your sister, she's broken. <laughs> it's like, oh, Grunkle Stan, I should have told you before. Mabel has a childhood terror of old-timey stop-motion animation. It's like her number one fear since we were kids. He's like, Haha, come on, those hokey old things. How could you be scared? And when we cut over to uh, Mabel, and she's like, the Cyclops, his face is made of nightmares. He's like, kid, these movies, they cannot hurt you. She's like, no talking. They wait for you to talk, and then they crawl inside your mouth. <laughs> Dipper's like, why'd you have to show her that tape? like, oh, there's got to be a way to get her over this. Um, he's looking at the back of the box, and it says, Filmed in Gravity Falls, Oregon. He's like, huh. Um, yeah. So they uh, show up to the director's house. Just show up. And Stan's like, all right, if we could just get the director to show her that these are just tiny little fake models, she'll calm down. Um, Zeus says, I don't know, dude. According to the internet, uh, special effects genius Harry Claymore is some kind of recluse. Stan's like, a man wants his privacy. I can respect that. 
And that's when he throws a grappling hook over the fence. He's like, well, everybody over the fence. <laughs> it's pretty good. He's like, see, Mabel, these movies, these monsters aren't real. They moved around uh, frame by frame, one one at, a one at a time by an anti-social sh shot in. And she says, those people are called animators, <laughs> which is good. Good bit. Um, they open the door to the house like, hello, Mr. Claymore. Hey, we will look at your, figur your figurines. Zeus says, we're not paparazzi, as he starts taking a bunch of pictures. Uh, Dipper picks up, like, an old uh, model. It's a gorilla, like, and it's missing an arm. It's like, see, Mabel, it's all just special effects. You can come out. And Mabel's like, no. He's like, kid, listen to me for the last time. There's nothing here to be afraid of. Uh, that's when the giant claymation um, Cyclops from the movie they were watching steps from behind him and starts roaring at them. They're like, ah! Uh, it's slowly swiping at us. <laughs> this is like, let's escape by standing still. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> A bunch of other claymation creations pop up from clay, these skeletons with swords. Mabel gets knocked out of her hiding basket and touched by one of them, and she starts screaming and runs up the stairs away from where everybody is getting, like, put into clay. And there's like, what is happening? What do they want? And we hear a voice say, I'm afraid they want you. It's uh, Harry Claymore. He's tied up by the skeletons. I'm like, Harry Claymore, massive special effects, circa 1970-something. He's like, alas, my effects are more special than you know. And they were like, how, how are these things real? What about stop motion? He's like, what? You do really believe someone would move these figures one frame at a time? I'm not a masochist. I use black magic to animate them. <laughs> it was great at, one, at first, but then one day... Uh, we cut back to the past, to the Gravity Falls Gospiter. And the, t and the uh, headline says, Computer animation invented. Stop motion declared dead. And we get treated to a terrible-looking 3D uh, model of a man eating a cookie. It's bad. But it does say, so real-looking under the picture. Because if you go back and if you watch the first Toy Story, um, it's it's not as good as you remember it. No, it's not. It, like I mean, the story's fine. But the animation... No. It's, it's almost grotesque to look at. It's just, it is terrifying. It is terrifying. Um, yeah, they. I know that we're against like reboots and whatever, but I think with animated movies like computer animation, I think they should be allowed to go back and like just update the animation, sort of like video games. They do it for video games all the time. Do it for movies. <laughs> do it for movies. Um, Shrek still. No, Shrek still looks bad. Shrek looks great. Eh, agree to disagree. I have recently watched the first two Shrek movies. That's from 2000, which is a lot, which is like five years newer than Toy Story, to be fair. Mm, okay. It, it is significant. It is, that is, and that's significant in terms of computer stuff. Yeah, so it, it really is. Them, but I think it still holds up. Like, the humans are not horrifying to look at. <laughs> not, like, not like in Toy Story. Um, Jeez. You thought that baby on the spider thing was the creepiest thing about Toy Story? Go back and look at Sid's face. Like, there's a reason that all of the, the Pixar, like Pixar's first like, five movies are toys, insects. Uh, I think all, it's all inanimate objects. It's things that don't need to look like a human. I think the Bugs Life still kind of holds up. No, I mean they're not bad movies, and they. It's not that they. They don't look bad, but the humans look bad. Oh, okay. And, like, they, they have intentionally, like, made... They, like, the first movies were all very intentionally... Um, right, not people. Yeah. Um, gotcha. Toy Story, Bugs Life, Monsters, Inc. Uh, by the time you get to, like, Finding Nemo, you know, they, they've, they've got humans down pretty well. So, like, the, like Incredibles Forward is all very normal people. Right. So the claymation uh, Cyclops is very angry. He's like, no, where's the heart? 
And now they were out of work. They went mad and they enslaved me, says Harry. And now they will turn you into unholy beasts of clay to join in their mischief. Uh, Zeus says, well, Mr. Pines, uh, you got to work with, with your favorite director, and now you're going to suffer suffocate in a big wad of clay. <laughs> uh, Dipper screaming for help. Somebody help us. And uh, was like, what do I do? How can I defeat these monstrosities? She picks up some clay, and she makes a little happy face. And she's like, huh, I changed it into something I liked. Whoa, I think I have an idea. She uh, says, hey, you one-eyed clops. Yeah, I'm talking to you, dum-dum. Come at me. Uh, Mabel runs at it and dives into its chest. We watch a little blob uh, crawl up this thing until Mabel pops out. She's like, I want to wipe that face off your face. Oh, I've got big plans for you. And uh, she remakes the Cyclops. She's like, hey, it's clayback time. Uh, she's made a uh, Twinkle Starheart. Or whatever this thing's name was. And it's a... Uh, I don't know how changing its appearance changes its personality. But it sure does. And uh, it starts attacking the skeletons. And this is like, dude, you conquered your fear. And the uh, star's like, that's right, because she believed in herself. And she's like, can it, Twinkle Heart? Start pounding those skeletons. Um, and, it, and it does. Mabel starts uh, freeing uh, Dipper and, and Stan and Zeus from the clay. And Dipper's like, you did it, Mabel. You conquered your fear. She's like, oh, no. I'm twice as scared now. But now I know it's rational. <laughs> Uh, Stan's like, kid, I'm sorry I doubted you. You were right. Stop motion is pure evil. And probably really expensive. Uh, <laughs> Harry's like, incredibly expensive. We're basically being treated to the stop motion fight via shadows, via animated shadows, because claymation uh, stop motion is expensive. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> it's very yeah. expensive. Um, so we get to basically watch the outline of the fight happening, and uh, it's pretty good. It's 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 pretty good. So it was like, oh, this is an impressive fight, though. I'm glad I'm facing towards it, uh, and, and for, you know, <laughs> letting us know that we're never going to see it. Uh, it ends, and they all start clapping. Yay! That was the best part. Um, We cut back over to the Mystery Shack. They're watching another old movie, another Loin Clothicles movie, The Creature with an Unreasonable Amount of Heads. And Dipper says, I think we wanted today that you could remold your fears. And it was like, Yeah, I'm just glad that none of us got turned into clay. In which we then cut over to Zeus, and he's like, Holy the Lidl! Uh, he looks like Gumby. If you know what Gumby is, then I don't have to explain it. But he says, who wants to see me change into almost anything? <laughs> oh, he starts humming, changing shapes. He's like, I can walk through walls. He slides through. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Grunkle Sand throws the tape through his head. He's like, we're safe now, kids. We're safe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we cut back over to Stan in the mystery shack where he's been telling us these tales. He's like, I don't get it. You don't want the pig? You don't want my tapes? Are you going to buy anything? He's like, I'm, okay, well, how about this delicious potion? Here, have a free sample. Uh, we drink the potion, and our vision starts to go out. And we fall over. Stan's like, you should have bought my merch when you had the chance, buddy. But that's okay. I want to have something new for sale very soon. <laughs> um, we open our eyes, and Stan's... Showing tourists around the mystery show. He's like, and here we have our latest attraction. The legendary cheapskate. A uh, little girl says, I saw it blinking. He's like, ha, that's just an optical illusion. Come along, everybody. Uh, yeah, we're now trapped in a box. Um, he's like, and Sam pops back and says, that's right. I'm a jerk. <laughs> the, end, the end sequence is Mabel asking us to play tic-tac-toe. And she draws out a thing, and we create an X. And she's like, oh, actually, I wanted to be X's. Let me be X's. 
And Deborah's like, just just trust me, just let her be X's. So then the hand draws a, an O, and she's like, yay! She draws another X, and she's like, oh, actually, I changed my mind, I'll be the Yo's. So we draw another X, and <laughs> we're about to win, and she's like, mm, you're gonna hate me right now, but it's X is still a possibility. The hand spells out, help me. Like, she's like, I don't think you're playing this right, which is pretty good for Mabel. And yeah. that's the end. In the episode, uh, good episode, uh, lots of fun. What do you think? Uh, I like this episode a lot. Uh, it's got, um, like, all three segments are paced really well. Maybe the hand, like, the hand witch is maybe the weakest one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's still got good gags in it. And again, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Right. Like, the claymation one could definitely be a whole episode. Oh, absolutely. And, like, depending on what they wanted, what they what they could do with um, the other two, like, the Waddles one could maybe be a whole episode. Mm-hmm. But it's like a B-plot. Yeah. But, uh, no, are these, like, this is just three good stories. I agree, they are very good stories. Um, we've already mentioned that Neil deGrasse Tyson was a guest this week. Um, yep. And no really other, like, like guest guests. Yeah, I think the rest of the other, let's see, uh... The rest of the cast is pretty... Matt Chapman is the hand witch. Uh, John DiMaggio as Harry Claymore. Yeah, so normal, so like normal, uh, voice cast roles. Yeah. Um, the cryptogram, there's a couple cryptograms this week. Um, the page section at the end of the episode translates out to all animation is black magic. And another cryptogram during the ending credits, uh, translates out to check out Dr. Waddle's latest book, a brief history of oink, 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 oink. Which is pretty good. Apparently, the fear of clay is called lutumtophobia. Oh. Interesting. Um, we already mentioned, mentioned uh, for continuity several chimes. There's a lot of good background gags and stuff in in the episode, especially the hand witch one. Yeah. When they go to there. Like the agents from Scarioke appearing in the back of the uh, swap meet and the bowling alley. Waddle's Jack O'Melon. And several of Meeble's sweaters make a reappearance. Which is good. Yeah. I don't really have uh, much else to talk about. We do have a question. We have one question this week. Folks, yeah. send us questions. We're begging you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about begging, begging, but you know. Yeah. We crave interaction. We do crave interaction. So we live, in, we live in two small boxes, and all we have is Discord. All we have is Discord. Um, this week's question comes from at Antipago. I think that was be how you pronounce that. Anyway, he asks, what is Gravity's best throw, Gravity Falls best throwaway gag, and why is it this one? It's a picture of a uh, well duck detective. It seems to really quack the case. Only for a duck detective to say, don't patronize me. Which is a good gag. Very That's a good, good gag. I don't know if I'd call that a throwaway gag, because duck detective is a running gag. Well, I mean, the uh, throwaway gag is uh, the uh, don't patronize me thing. Yeah, but uh, no, that's that's a really good one. Uh, let's see. Do I have a I don't know favorite? If it's the best, though. Let's um, see. Honestly, it's like with the way my brain works, it's hard to remember like every single gag. But I think the best throwaway gag that I can remember is Stan in the balloon. 
how he made a big giant balloon of his face that says, I heart children, and it goes all horribly wrong, catches on fire, says, turns into, I eat children. And uh, a kid says, Mommy, is that hor- are we going to die? Is that horrible face going to eat us? And instead of the mother comforting the child, she goes, Yes, Jimmy! Yes, it is! I think that's the best throwaway gag. Let's see. Uh, married to a woodpecker is married to a woodpecker is good. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, or uh, uh, Rumble McSkirmish. Uh, this is as still as I can stand. Uh, actually, um, I was going over my notes, my podcasting notes from uh, episodes we've done so far. Uh-huh. Uh huh. One that stood out to me was uh, when Seuss described his cousin dying. <laughs> <laughs> My cousin got into a fight once. The other guy broke all his bones in his legs and his arms, and then I think he died. True story. True story. Uh, oh, no, okay, it's he broke all his arms, broke all his legs, and I think he died or something. We were just talking about it. <laughs> that's a good gag. Yeah, that's great. Uh, there's a good th- the good throwaway gag in this particular episode is when Waddle says that he misses his tummy getting tickled. I think that's pretty good. Like he's like it's just like he's got like this like knowledge is like, you know, a horizon, not a prize. You know, it's very insightful and impactful. And he ends it with, also I miss my tummy being tickled. <laughs> I think that's good. My favorite line of this episode is probably is probably Mabel's response like, Are you still afraid? No. I'm i I'm more afraid than ever. But at least I know it's rational. <laughs> at least I know it's rational now. Which now that's gold. It's gold. That's um cool. And this isn't really a throwaway line, but it is one of my favorite lines from the series. Uh, Bill Cipher saying, it's funny how dumb you are. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that, that's, prob- that, that's one of my favorite lines from the whole series. It's not really a whole gag. It's just kind of like a funny line. Yeah. Anyway, Gravity Falls is good. It's hard to pick a, a, a favorite throwaway gag because, like, There's... it doesn't just do random it doesn't do just do a ton of random cutaways the way some shows do mm-hmm. Every one of the jokes are worked into the plot yeah absolutely <sighs> dippy fresh is kind of a good gag later yeah. on and we'll get to it we'll get to it um so yeah that's all i have for this week glad we got a question would like more questions be a fun segment um, so, hey, Doc, where can people find you online if they want to, like, talk to you about stuff? Uh, I am on Twitter way too much. I'm at Dr. C Monster. That is at DRC Monster. Uh, come and find me on Twitter where I can, um, you can see me, uh, call uh, the MB, the Myers-Briggs type indicator, astrology for STEM majors. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. It is now. I had, I had, I had, I did have to issue a correction. I initially called it astrology for white guys, and that's not fair. It's astrology for STEM majors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. You can find me as always on Twitter at datfireprincess, spelled D A T. You can find me on my numerous podcasts that I do. I do a bunch, including one that I do with Doc Sea Monster every Saturday called Let's Pull the Trigger on a Podcast. It's just this, but for everything done by Studio Trigger, which is honestly a mistake. I should have never, ever said let's do everything Studio Trigger. But hey, um, we are getting to the end of Gravity Falls. We we only have like th- like four episodes left of Gravity Falls. I mean, um, well, well, we have like ten episodes of Gravity Falls left. Yeah, but we have we have four episodes of of Kill Kill left. Yeah, and then we get into uh, when what? when supernatural battles were commonplace. That's the I next no one. Idea. I have absolutely no idea what that is. It's it's by Studio Trigger. <laughs> I think it's. Only oh, I know like, that. I think it's only like twelve episodes long, though. I don't think it's a lot. I, like I have no idea what it's about. What's well, about when supernatural battles were commonplace? <laughs> That could be any anime. <laughs> that could be literally any anime. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it. That's it, everybody. So, 
until next time, remember. Reality is an illusion. The universe is a hologram. Bye, gold. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, want to play tic-tac-toe? <laughs> hey, I wanted to be exes. Let me be exes. Trust me, just let her be exes. <sighs> Yay! <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry. I changed my mind. I'll be O's. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna hate me right now, but is X is still a possibility? <laughs> I don't think you're playing this right. <laughs>